what I would like to see, in fact, and this is, this is a, an effort uh, for Open SUNY, is more open educational resources available to my students that are usable in my online course. Currently, my students pay way too much for uh, a textbook that is a great textbook, um, but the French language has been around for a very long time, and it's not the only textbook in the world that, <laughs> that has French. So I would like to see more user-friendly um, OER uh, resources for, for my students out there. We're big advocates for the, the use of open content because the publishers are pricing us out of the market. Especially at a community college, you know, we deal with students that, that come from a background where they don't have a lot of extra money in their pockets. And we've noticed that students aren't buying textbooks because they're being priced out. Uh, and a lot of our faculty are discouraged by that. So they want to find alternative ways to provide resources, learning resources to their students. And so OER is a perfect fit for that because there's content that's been created by other faculty that has been peer reviewed and vetted and faculty on our campus can take that content and then remix it. And to me, that's the most exciting thing about open. It's not so much that it's free because, you know, free is like puppies, right? They're, they're only free for a little while. Then you really pay a price. But it's the idea that the, the faculty are able to take the content and remix it and revise it and then bring it into their courses so that the, it is really uh, tailored to what they need for that semester or for that discipline. I came to open learning, which is the stuff that particularly interests me, um, about 10 years ago with an online webcast called EdTech Talk. And EdTech Talk was really the starter for me. It was the start of community. It was the start of the realization that simply sharing somehow was learning. And that was the piece that, that's still the nugget that I work with all the time, is what's this relationship between openness and people seeming to know more than they did when they walked in the room. Society in itself is becoming a heck of a lot more open. So if you create something, it's not something you create and you just own. It's something you can create and you can share. Uh, there, there's still a lot of people who are really confined to the idea of ownership, but I think once you start investing in open, in OER in particular for faculty, they see the real benefit of not so much owning the material, but letting the material sit out there for other faculty members to also take and remix and revise. And so the, the knowledge that's created from that, so you know, one single person or maybe a group of people create a textbook, right? Then that's just a static product that sits out there. But with OER, you could have four or five people create a resource, but then four or five other people are going to come in from four or five different places in the world and remix it and revise it. And that makes that knowledge base grow even, even further. So it's not about one person or a small group of people creating the content, but the whole world creating the content. And that's what's really exciting because we live in a global, you know, it's the global village now. The world's getting smaller every day. Uh, and the web has, 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 has provided us the opportunity to connect with anybody around the world. I've really enjoyed being able to share the things that have been in my mind to create and have finally been able to create them uh, with other instructors and see how much that they've appreciated that and enjoyed using them. Well, the CalcPlot 3D applet is something that's been used across the country and extensively also in Mexico. Um, it really focuses on helping both instructors and students visualize multivariable calculus concepts. It really tries to be a one place uh, exploration environment where you can look at the interaction between many different um, visual objects from the course. You can look at um, implicit surfaces, you can look at uh, regular functions of two variables, you can look at curves, intersections of curves, vectors and points, and you can put them all together on the one screen and play with it without knowing programming or you know, how to encode the, the things that you'd have to do to use Mathematica or Maple to do it. And so it's really focused on visualization and on being accessible to the student, as well as a place you can ask what if questions during class. So I've, I've presented on it at many different conferences and I think that's really helped to spread the word on it and people are using it extensively across the country. I've had I think 120, I forget if it's 120, yeah, over, over 100,000 hits on the site last year and that's 
that's a, that's a lot. So there's a lot of people using it, and t they always are. E there's people emailing me constantly. I even got one yesterday from a teacher that I hadn't heard of before that told me that they were using it with their students uh, and really finding it very useful. I've had one um, professor who's been a power user of the of the applet share with me just how much he appreciates it because so many of his students are not very wealthy. They don't have a lot of extra money for purchasing you know, software or books. And so this has been a real benefit to his students. Uh, even students that you know use Mathematica or Maple, when they're given this applet as an option, they often have chosen to jump to it first because of its intuitive nature, that it's so easy to use and doesn't require a lot of extra knowledge of how to use it. So that's, that's, those are some positive benefits. Um, it's, it's an open use resource. Uh, it's not so much open source because most of the people who are using it don't need to know how to program in order to, to use it. The focus is on just making it easy to, to play with and learn, learn from and with. Probably one of the pitfalls in open, uh, especially with the, the World Wide Web, it's kind of like the Wild West. It's hard to locate those materials. Um, you know, a friend of mine once said, you know, English professors are never invited to the email party. Well, you know, librarians were not invite, invited to the internet party early enough. So what we're doing now is we're taking that open content and a lot of our catalogers are using uh, metadata to help uh, that material be uh, found much easier for our faculty because it's better to teach them how to fish than to keep fishing for them. Uh, at the same time, a lot of our uh, librarians are finding these repositories that exist and directing our faculty to these repositories, showing them how they, how they work, and then letting them go out and do some fishing on their own, and then they can check back in with us or an instructional designer when they need some more assistance, either finding more material, different material, or connecting into the learning management system or, or whatever they're using to share it. The one thing that gets me most excited is that every time you hear a campus or you hear a politician stand in the mic or, or you know campus administrator or a politician step in the microphone, they talk about this need to make college affordable for students. And so one way we want to make college affordable is let's take the burden of paying for those learning resources off their backs and we can provide those resources to them at an affordable price, if not free altogether. And then the real benefit for the faculty is that now they don't have to work in silos. It's not about the math department at Monroe Community College. It's about the math faculty inside Open SUNY. It's about the math faculty in North America. It's about anybody teaching math all, across, all around the world. And just the, uh, the power of connecting people with ideas and people with resources and students with each other, it's incredibly powerful. It, connecting the world together around the idea of education. No matter where the learner is or who the learner is, they can connect to these resources and the people who have the ownership are the educators and the learners and not some third party whose only interest isn't really on the education market. Thank you.